how many trips do you have to make? This guy's irritating. The fuck? Like, what? Of course they do that. The fuck is with this? Bay FC loses to Angel City FC 2 to nothing. And with more sports news, here's Stephen Langford. Team USA Basketball donning the red, white, and blue, seeking to go home with gold around their neck. The quest for a 17th gold medal starts tomorrow. Looking for his first during an illustrious, record-breaking NBA career, the one and only Steph Curry. Just knowing where I'm at, my career having a, an opportunity to have a first something is, is, is uh, something I'm excited about. Representing your country on the greatest stage as an Olympian. Uh, I wanted to be a part of that and the stars of the line that, you know, it's, it's a great time. Once fierce NBA Finals rivals for the first time ever, he'll compete with LeBron James. A non-participant uh, in the Tokyo Games, the 39-year-old has played for Team USA since 2004. And 20 years later, he is seeking a fourth gold medal. A lot of these countries have been together for years and years, you know, training for the Olympics, getting ready. So, you know, we have to uh, put the work in, but we have an opportunity to go down this. You know, one of the greater teams that we, you know, do what we feel to do. That was on the Today Show. First matchup against Serbia tomorrow morning at 8.15. That's followed by South Sudan on Wednesday. At the sports desk, Stephen Langford, KCBS. Cracked driveway, decaying deck, and overgrown and unusable outdoor space? Let System Pavers destroy it for you. This month, System Pavers will demolish, dig up, and haul away your dated, neglected concrete or asphalt for free. And we will replace them with the outdoor space of your dreams. Dramatic paver driveway, built-in fire pits, stunning outdoor kitchen, chair-worthy patios, and more. For over 30 years, System Pavers has helped more than 90,000 homeowners transform their homes through beautiful, durable, and high-quality outdoor remodels, and you can be next. Contact us today to take advantage of our most popular offer, free demolition and removal. Get started today by calling System Pavers at 800-PAVE-004 or visit systempavers.com slash radio to get inspired. That's 800 paid 4 or systemfavors.com slash radio. All orders must be placed by July 31st. See website for offer details. Contractor's license, 661575. Stay informed. Stay informed gives me the power of knowledge. I like to know what's going on. Download the Odyssey app and listen anywhere. KCBS, all news radio. And at 918, we have traffic and weather together. We're starting with your drive. Enjoy his last name. Better traffic conditions after this earlier deadly crash in Solano County on Highway 37. Eastbound Highway 37 is back open. You've still got stop and go traffic from Highway 121 to right around the Sonoma Creek Bridge as you head toward Vallejo. Westbound 37 brake lights after the Mare Island Bridge, then periods of slow traffic to Highway 121. Of course, it's race day at Sonoma Raceway. The NHRA Sonoma Nationals are today. Spectator gates opened at 8 this morning. Bay Bridge into the city, it's still an easy ride. No metering lights, no delays here. On the peninsula in San Mateo County, CHP reminds us that Highway 1 will be closed from Lindemar Boulevard to Montera in both directions. Crews are resuming a rescue operation after a deadly crash at Devil Slide yesterday. Next traffic update, 928 on the traffic leader, KCBS. Thanks, Joey. The KCBS Bay Area six-day forecast today and tomorrow, mostly clear skies inland. We have some clouds, fog, and drizzle along the coast. Uh, it's going to be much cooler inland this weekend, though. Highs in the low 60s to low 80s. Monday all the way through Thursday, things staying fairly mild through the middle of the week or early of the part of the week uh, with temperatures in the 70s and 80s. It's going to start to warm up again Wednesday and Thursday with high temperatures expected again inland back into the 90s. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News, 106.9 and AM 740 KCBS. KCBS News Time 920. Well, with the opening ceremonies behind us, the 2024 Olympic Games are now officially underway in Paris with medals already being won. For more now, we're joined on the KCBS Ring Central News Line by Henry Rabar, staff writer at Slate. Henry, thanks for joining us this morning. 
you're you're in Paris right now for the game, so what's the mood in the city? Well, as you may have seen on television yesterday, it is raining here in Paris. That said, I think everyone's in a pretty good mood now that the game's finally gotten in the way. There was a lot of um, suspense leading up to the opening ceremony. People were worried that it wouldn't go off. Right? There was a ton of security, and uh, in spite of the rain, I think people were pretty pleased with the performance last night. Yeah, I wondered how that would play out, because I did notice the rain. It seemed like people were kind of hunkered down. Rain, a little bit of wind, though. Uh, so most of those are hopefully attending in person uh, could actually see. I mean, it wasn't that bad, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think the rain was a problem for the visibility, but it did rain quite a lot. And I think the, the good thing that happened was it was a little bit like being at a music festival where at first you're kind of worried about your makeup or your shoes, and then you get so wet that you just don't care anymore. And uh, that's where everyone was at by the end of the opening ceremony. <laughs> and everyone has those trash bags, you know, that you've got to hold out for your head or whatnot. So, so Henry, uh, as far as the security, we keep hearing about security and that it was significantly ramped up uh, throughout the city. How noticeable is it? I mean, what do you see? Well, in the lead up to the opening ceremony, which was performed along the Seine River at the heart of the city over a stretch of several miles, basically all of Paris was cut in two for the better part of a week. I mean, their streets were barricaded. Most of the bridges over the river were closed. There were riverfront businesses, cafes, galleries that were totally inaccessible. Um, and that, that was a pretty um, draconian, I think, measure to get that opening ceremony off. That said, now that it's over, all that stuff has been dismantled overnight. And the city is feeling much more like itself. And obviously also the crowds have arrived um, to go to the games themselves. So uh, the mood today is uh, pretty buoyant. Well, when you talk about crowds, I mean, just how busy does it seem? I, I'm not sure if you've been to Paris before. I mean, obviously, it's a busy city as it is. Does it does it seem like it's really overwhelmed with uh, Olympic activity? Not so far. Um, one of the things that happens in Paris every summer is that pretty much everybody goes on vacation in late July and early August. And uh, so the theory behind holding the Olympics at this time is that the Olympic visitors will take those places on the trains and the restaurants, et cetera, on the sidewalks that were uh, occupied um, during the rest of the year by uh, Parisians who have left town. So the, the thinking is that there is enough room in the city for these yeah, Olympic Napoli, visitors. Like I did um, that. And, uh, and, and, and we'll, we'll see how that, how that goes, but I think so far, so good. That's what about, like, with public transit and that? I mean, there was that arson attack on the train the system problem. ahead of the opening on ceremony. The uh, did that have much impact uh, on transit? How does it uh, appear that people are really getting around? Yeah, well, that attack brought down mainline trains that were linking Paris to provincial cities. Um, within Paris, the metro is working uh, perfectly, as it always does. Um, the buses are running more regularly again now that the uh, Seine is... Uh, back and open uh, for passage, and uh, I think generally the system is, is you know, if you're coming from an American city and you're accustomed to waiting uh, 20 minutes for a train, you'll you'll be quite, quite pleased by the frequency of, of the service here, and um, all the venues, of course, are accessible by mass transit, and I think they're also hoping that people will ride bikes, and uh, we'll see if that comes to pass when uh, it stops raining. What are you uh, looking most forward to? I am going to see beach volleyball in front of the Eiffel Tower in this temporary stadium that's been put up at the foot of the tower, and I'm pretty excited about that. I was watching that this morning. Uh, I guess it was live Cuba and the U.S., and uh, the backdrop was just absolutely amazing. You know, the shot, like you said, you have all this sand, and that's like my favorite sport to watch. And uh, just it was really cool seeing the Eiffel Tower as the backdrop. Yeah, that's been the premise for most of the venues that they constructed, was build these temporary structures so we don't end up with a bunch of white elephant stadiums that uh, nobody uses for years and years, uh, and instead build these temporary structures in public places and make the city into a backdrop for the stadium. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Um, skateboarding, which is canceled today because of the rain, is happening at the Place de la Concorde, right in front of this big Egyptian obelisk. And um, I think there's there's quite a few venues. Horse racing, um, dressage is at the uh, Palace of Versailles, um, and so on. So and, and there are bike races today that are going on in the heart of the city. So that's very much the theme of these Olympics. And uh, so far, it seems to be a success. Yeah, really cool to be using all that as the backdrop. Henry, thanks so much for joining us. Have fun. 
You got it. Take care. All righty. And that was Henry Garbari, the staff writer at Slate. We're going to get a check of Bay Area traffic uh, with Joey Vlasny coming up in just a few minutes. Get ready to conquer the road in the all-new 2024 GMC Hummer QS EV SUV. Experience the power of innovation with the world's first ever super truck. Designed for off-road enthusiasts and electric vehicle pioneers alike. Lease the GMC Hummer QS EV now for just $9.99. 36 months with only $79.95 due at signing. This seat features revolutionary crab walk mode, allowing for unparalleled maneuverability in challenging terrain. With an impressive 350 miles of range on a full charge, the GMC Hummer 2 SCV combines sustainability with uncompromising performance. Hurry, this offer ends soon. Visit Fremont Buick GMC or Dublin Buick GMC today to test drive the 2024 GMC Hummer 2 XEV SUV. $79.95 to assign. Buick Security Deposit. 10,000 miles per year, 25 cents per mile in excess. Buy at this price. Plus tax title license and registration fee. For well-qualified lessees only. Not all buyers will qualify. Retail delivery by July 31st, 2024. GMC, we are professional grade. The last time you checked your house for termites was probably when you bought your house. How long has that been? This is Joe Starkey. With one call to Pacific Coast Termite, a uniformed inspector will come to your home or business and answer your questions and inspect your property. Now, even if you don't think you have termites, yikes, I recommend you call Pacific Coast Termite for a free home inspection to make sure. Certain restrictions apply. If you do have termites, they can get rid of them with no tenting, no double bag in your food, no pet sitting. I'm so sick of this thing. Why the fuck is this fault holder not working? Damn, this is fucking ridiculous. Whole time I'm having to fucking fix it. I am so fucking sick of that. Damn.